the painterly shader is finally here and this is version 0.1 which means there is a lot of room to improve but let me show you how the generators that I created are connected between each other to generate all of these layers of painting including the effect to underpaint the skin. Now we also have to show the comic painterly shader which a lot of you seem to have found very interesting. I'll be showing this specific uh, shader in kind of a rundown here in this video. Now please bear in mind this is not a tutorial, this is just a video showcase to tell you how you can use these shaders which are available on my Patreon. There is a nice add-on called flow map which is used to smear vectors. Basically, we're going to smear procedural materials and that is awesome. But just in case, you can also render out your model and then you can give finishing touches in Krita using the new RGBA brushes. This shader was developed for the sole purpose to give you a head starting point if you are not an artist. But here are some basic concepts that I need you to understand before coming into the shader. The concept number one is the generators. We need to procedurally generate different layers that are going to be blending between each other using the mix RGB node in different factors such as overlay, darken, multiply, and then you can have the power to come to each of those generators and manipulate, for example, the scale points that you see right here. The second concept I need you to get is that artists paint with light. You need to understand how light affects your surface even though your surface does not have a shader like in this case. I'm going to take this high polygonal statue and then I'm going to use some cool and warm colors set to specific places uh, given with the reference of any other painterly best picture that you can find about different artists. Now how do you append your shader? Well you can go to file, append, follow the procedure here in the video and then you can point to materials and then painterly skin version 0.1. That's the painterly look, not the comic one. So this is going to apply it right here. You select this, you come down here to the material, select it, the recently appended material, and then it will assignate it. Now make sure that your scale is set to one unit in Blender, otherwise it would look very small. Now it reacts very slowly because the shader is very heavy, okay? And there is also a lot of polygons on the screen. Now one thing I need you to understand is to download the add-on which is called flow map and make sure that it is active so that you can use it when you want to smear your procedural layer which in this case is the base layer now of course you need to know about color harmony um, you need to understand how to depict every picture that you see here for example highlights blending modes uh, smears and you can take Rubens paintings, for example, so you can also look for Caravaggio paintings to know the contrast, levels, values, uh, even details such as the rust or like in this, this example, uh, the accumulated material that dries off over time. You can check out also values like what do you do when you saturate things or desaturate things. Now, I will strongly recommend that you follow the Krita channel uh, with Ramon Miranda because he creates natural feeling brushes using Krita engine to create a natural smooth feeling and a very organic approach. All of his brushes are created from real medium capture brushes. The following shaders are available in my Patreon. This is a quick presentation for the stylized painterly shader. The idea here was to mix different techniques and create different procedural layers, if we can call it that way. Each one of these nodes, it's a generator. It will generate a procedural noise, if we can call it that way, or a procedural stylized layer. So what if you have a texture and you want to combine it all together with this? You can come here to this top part of the tree, of the shader tree. And this is the most important area that you can uh, find in the shader. Because if you have a texture, you can directly connect it here. Once you have that, you can use this mixer to favor your texture in zero 
or favor the painterly effect when it's set to 1. Right now it's set to 1, so everything you see is procedural. It will not take into acquaintance your image texture. So if you load up an image texture right here, then you can evaluate probably at 50% or something lower. You can also change to color dodge or color or hue or value. Hue, saturation, color, value. I recommend you go first with this and then you try mix or you can also try multiply. The mixing factor here will be decided by the look that you want so that's not a problem. All you need to know is that if you're going to zero you're going to favor all the way the appearance of the texture but if you favor one then it's going to show the painterly effect and that is good. There's a big section down here which is kind of the main core of this entire shader. Everything that you see down here it's what I call the generators and generators blend between themselves using a certain method like mix, overlay, multiply, hue and value, color dodge, add, and you know just the usual uh, mix RGB things. And why is this important? Because paint has different layers to stylize the, the stroke, the paint stroke. This part down here is something that I'm still working on, which is the smearing effect. All of this does the smearing, and therefore you have different controls to, um, to the size, rotation, the pigment size, the sharpness, and the blur for 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 that and the way it picks up the smear is by reading the vertex color so once you activate the procedural uh, painting method you can further smear your strokes or your procedural generated um, layer textures using vertex colors but we're going to cover that later in the minutes so everything you see here can be adjusted. Each generator will have its own uh, mapping which you can use to stretch your textures. In this case I'm stretching on the Y axis and the Z axis. Next it will come the actual distortion or actually the layer scale size which you can also manipulate. So, as you can see, we have many different layers here. What's the correct approach to to modulate them? So let's start with the simple with the simple one, which is called the blockiness stroke. Okay. So let's minimize this window. Let's switch this to full render view, so you can see it right there. If you switch to no light you'll see this you'll probably read it as well but then the lights will not affect it so the way I recommend you to start creating your advanced shader would be going obviously to preferences in add-ons and activating the node wrangler this is very important for you to use the node wrangler make, make sure that you have this active so once you have that active the next thing you want to do is to well, let's start with something even simpler let's go I don't know I think this roughness flakes here we go monochromatic pigment dots let's start with this this is this probably the easier one so you can press control and shift and then click here on the latest on the last node of the three you're going to read from left to right when you want to manipulate this in any kind of properties but if you need to understand the node you're going to read from right to the left that means before generating something something that came before distorts or rather modifies the coordinates and something before that modifies that coordinate and again we can distort it once again by reading the properties from the object itself 
so that's the way you read this I've explained this in other videos of mine so you can check those so here we go I'm going to uh, select this one color ramp using control and shift and then I'll go to color so you can see here that we have different uh, pigment colors monochromatic pigment colors and now let's read the note so it says scale the painterly dots so right now I'm going to just copy this and then you can see you can scale more dots like the ones you do when you are um, painting in a medium where it's very or it has many pores the idea here is that some of these pores concentrate ink okay so that's that's a the other and then you can come here so where it says the musgrave texture for example you can continue to scale this I'm going to press shift and now I'm going to drag this is going to create some variance so, you, so we don't have the same pores with the same appearance otherwise we would have something like this and it's just too boring to to do it that way so leaving it like that you can see that we have some different um, ink concentrations if we can say it so you can also clamp this by coming here into a maximum or minimum but this is kind of like the contrast so as you can see you can play with this all all of you need all that you need to do uh, to generate the contrast and stuff and then you will not get lost because you're only working on the monochromatic pigment dots you can tweak them however you would like You can also change this so that mixing can, you know, create bigger drops of ink in the medium. But I prefer to leave it somewhere around there so that I can get some uh, kind of concentration different from the other values. Let's go over here to the two layer stroke variance because this is probably the most, the most, um, important part of the shader as you can see I've aimed to create the skin tone first we can create other materials but I'm uh, releasing this to get the skin tones and therefore you can come here to the two layer stroke variance what's the idea here the idea here is that if you have either a watercolor appearance or a oil or an oily appearance you can create the the smearing or rather the accumulation of the stroke stops using two layer variants so let's say that she has a blue skin let's go with blue what you want to do is to locate this green uh, frames in the entire tree and whenever you see green frames that determines the most important look for the style so here we have another green frame and this uh, red frame down here means that that also is a very important parameter to determine the look so basically once all of that is done and mixed you can combine it all the way up here but let's continue with the generators so this generator unfortunately for me I wasn't able to uh, do it in another way uh, I had to do it over a color gradient, color ramp, because you can add as many colors as you want. But I found out that if you crunch them, like I am doing here, with three different colors, you can get this kind of um, appearance. Now you would say, why would we want to change it over here when we can go all the way up until the end of the tree and then just uh, color correct hue? Like for example, if that is color, then we can use it here, right? Hue saturation, just connect that and then switch the hue. So that's connected and then you can you know, sh shift the hue all the way to blue and then you will still get a good result but then what happens you will get this this um, something that's not working right and that is because we used a different um, uh, generator to create such colors therefore you need to come here for the hue saturation base color and contrast and that's why you see this orangey stuff because it's coming from here 
So now you need to introduce a pigment that is complementary to that green color. Let's say it's going to be a very uh, purplish thing. And now you can see that the, that under layer changed the entire approach of the face. So this is why you need to understand up to a certain point that not only it's um, possible to change it using a hue color saturation value as we normally would with any with anything but that there is a factor there is a factor that will also affect the the, the if we can say it the, the property of the ink the sub layer property of the ink so if you have green and then you're going to use an under layer color of green this is the result because it's looking for complementary uh, values another thing that I want to point out when you're creating your your um, artwork is the use of lights there is one specific light this one right here it says light 007 controls the shadow wherever you move this thing it's going to cast the shadow over here watch this if I move this okay it's going to uh, change or affect the face if you're going to move it over here well I think right now yeah I'm on let me uncheck that uh, if you move it over here and it's going to affect this thing because this specific shadow is designed to control the appearance for the threshold on this model so you can locate that under there this model is also affected by the regular lights that you are going to put but only one light is going to uh, do that effect which is light 007 and depending on how you compose your lights you are also going to get different effects for your skin because we're using a normal map which is the traditional method to create something stylized you know you affect the normals on your model and the way we affect the normals, it's right here, where it says noise normals. And then you can change the factor detail size, or um, the normal noise size as well. And then that's connected to a normal map, which in turn will go into the main shader. The main shader is just the diffuse BSDF. And why do I do this? because I want the light to affect it. Um, you can also connect it to a Half Lambert shader and it will work just perfectly. As a matter of fact, I super recommend that you do a Half Lambert shader and then connect it there. But I was just um, quickly drafting this so I just connected to a Diffuse BSDF and then mixed it to a 50% with this custom ring light that I created. You can see that the custom ring light have different parameters. Let me see if I can get close here. So for example, if I go left to right, you can move this, okay? Or the cutoff, and you can see that the ring light can be extended or contracted using the cutoff that is connected to an emission so if you want you can you know make this really sharp like 50 you're gonna get this or just leave it at one and then it's going to mix with the shader with the main shader with everything that we've created depending on what you are looking for you can also obviously customize this color so if you want some green it's gonna have some green whatever you want to do with this shader or with this um, highlight you can customize it um, with very easy parameters and if you select here control shift click you're going to get the noise normals this is what creates that um, bumpy effect on the surface and that's part of the entire tree because the rest of the painterly generators are doing their part as well some of you will notice that I'm using a bump in places that you're not supposed to have a bump if you're not going to affect normals. But I'm going to show you why I do that. Anyways, let's go back to our noise normals. 
and there you can you know change this to any factor you want and it's going to you know make this sharper or make this um, noisier you can change that as well as a matter of fact the, the lighter version has less controls and more direct approach to what the noise noise does but in here you're free to change the distance from each smear or the let's say compact space between the each of the Voronoi fragments if we can say it so okay so this is my basic approach and if you want to just mix between very noisy or very smooth you can just dial this in for the factor so this is another uh, module uh, here's a half lamber with the light object this is how we picked up the light and as you can see it's it's working there so the half lambert with light object uh, it's selected here this is light 007 so this is how you determine which light you'll want to do or you'll want to use to affect that shader and you can just uh, use the generated nodes or coordinates there I left it like this and not connected all the way over here because as you can see um, everything comes out from generated normals and UVs some of the nodes are using object as their mapping coordinates and that's something that you can explore on your own so clicking here control shift click it's gonna give me this this is for UVs so if your object has, has UVs like you can see here in Zuzan then it's going to work by see that depending how much light it's receiving it's going to make this smeary effect okay so it's acting as a threshold for the smear effect but this is smear effect is procedural this is not the one where you come and paint so I'm going to control shift click over here so you can see what this uh, entire part does and this is what creates the base style by itself you can see it on Zuzan as well this is what creates the style this is um, this is the most important part of the of the shader this is the nucleus as we can if we can say it so the parameters that we have here for example rotation let me just show you if you can hit rotate then you can see it's going to rotate on the models that on the model that you've applied this to if you're going to scale the ink it's also going to you know create this uh, areas where there are there is more light the pigment size it's about I think it's the noise that's going to affect the distortion and in turn it's going to also affect the secondary noise and then finally that's going to be the the value to start contrasting this and therefore you can come here into contrast and make it very 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 contrasty maybe for some kind of ink look and also for the secondary layer so you have two layers here I call this layers although maybe they don't look like layers because it's a uh, map range operation that is going to limit the origin and the end like it says here from minimum to maximum and uh, you don't need to change any of the mappings most of the times it will give you just the right factors so what I'm recommending you to to try it's always to change the scales for example in the blockiness stroke let's go over here control shift click let it load okay so here again I'm not seeing any results directly but I can see it I can see them on Zuzan but you can see them on Zuzan I think this one is also picking up the UV right 
this is also picking up the UV. So why do I do this? Why do I have these factors that sometimes work and sometimes you do not see any any changes? Because I've I have I had to prepare this advanced setup so that users with UVs, like you can see right here, this uh, square grid, users with UVs will see the changes that are going to be applied. Blocking is a stroke, so the scale for that you can change it over here. Okay. So look at that, it's very good. It's just grayscale, but it's working with the UVs. So I had to be prepared for each scenario, either if it had no UVs, and then it will take all the generated nodes, either if it had UVs, and then it will take all the UVs nodes. And even if they, in the case that they do not have it, they will have a normal. So I took, a, took um, a precaution on that, and also connected the normals to all of these other layers. So in either case, I really, really, really expect this to work as intended. And uh, I hope that if you have any questions, you may ask them in the comment section below. I'll, I'll be happy to answer them. And again, if you can come here and change the scale for each of the, the procedural textures, like for annoying the noise, the wave texture, it's going to work very very good on your model so let me see what else we have here this is the ink overlay spread oh, okay this one this one is very interesting I'm going to I'm going to click here and what this intends to do as you can see right there we have a vertex color property how do we know that let's go back here let's change this to vertex so how how does the choosing of the color is decided this is where you need to install if you're on vertex paint mode this is where you need to install this marvelous add-on I'm using vertex paint and then I'm going to be using the properties of the tool you can come down here to where it says 3d flow map vertex paint you need to install the add-on flow map and in vertex paint and texture paint you're going to get this so the way this works is by let me switch here activating it by clicking here flow map vertex paint mode if you click that oh I'm going to get an error I'm going to press F for the brush size and whenever you draw you're going to smear your vectors you're going to smear see that you're going to smear your strokes and this is something that uh, you do not see maybe maybe my I don't know if you can see that it's not much, it's not that much noticeable but you can see that you're smearing your procedural textures this node this node right here ink overlay spread is the only one that can do this so once you're done, you're going to press escape. And if you press escape, then you will stop painting in the flow map vertex paint mode. Why is this important? Because the flow maps use a specific colors whenever they are being drawn. I don't know why I get that error. Maybe you will not get that error, but if you paint this color will automatically switch if you're going to an up to down position left to right position and down towards up position this will change automatically because it will write the color that is correct to the orientation in this case your stroke if you're going to smear up it's going to be drawing a certain color if you're going to be smearing diagonally down it's going to smear another color. If you're going to be smearing diagonally back, it's going to smear in another color. And that will be done automatically by the plugin. I did it before, and I don't know why I am not picking this up. Maybe I need to report that the add-on has this glitch or something. But I hope that you are going to get it working in your own version. So that's how the ink overlay spread works. And again, you can define how, how long the spreading is using the threshold or rather the col the color ramp 
again you can define the sprite overlay size with this okay so all of this as it's even easier to watch it down here on the plane um, if a 3d figure like the one that you have right here it's too complex you can move to a Suzanne or if even if you want even a more simpler version you can come here into the to the uh, square and that's where you can test your textures that's why Suzanne and the square is here I bid you to uh, hide this model and place your own model here either if it's a face or if it's a body of or if it's just a sculpture uh, of a hand for example uh, place it in the middle of this uh, space so that you can get the exact same results and lightning with that okay this is the advanced um, shader if you click here in the paint painterly ring light to add this is something that I really like um, because it takes the layer weight but it uses a bump instead so that whatever the light is hidden it's going to take the bump in acquaintance and it's going to give this painterly smear as well um, okay so another factor another generator that we have right here it's called roughness edges and variance of flakes so if I click here you're going to see that this is the classical flakes that you get whenever you're using any painting medium this is created when the surface is very rough and therefore I gave you parameters to use that um, contrast for example and you can also um, scale this so you can come here to the scale this is the one responsible to generate that and then you can scale it with a, a lot of grain or less grain of course if you want uh, more detail or dimension or, or more chaos you can come here into lacunarity and generate more chaos more defined uh, edges so that's the way it works so see this one for example is taking it directly from the object you can target any object and um, let me do it so you can see it I'm going to shift a create an empty let's use this cube it's kind of big if I put this cube over here select this and if you use that cube as a helper watch what's going to happen you can control the entire thing using the cube that's why I left it on object but without targeting any object because you can use the cube to actually um, position your texture if we can say it that way now if I delete this you can see this remains the same if I delete this then it's back to the original state that it was before that's why whenever you see object you can, you can use a null or I'm, I'm sorry an empty and then you can you know manipulate uh, rotations more directly and yeah that's basically it I know it looks complex but once you get each uh, each node its own try you can see what is going on there um, let me see if I forgot anything else I don't think I I need to cover anything else so again if you have any other questions please let me know in the comment section below so I can help you and it's very helpful whenever you create a snapshot or a screenshot and then you ask the question because that way I can help you um, with anything that you have um, in question faster because that that allows me to see what whatever you're seeing so my last advice is that you paint with light Renaissance masters in the painting periods always try to figure where the light source was so they can use that light source and uh, affect whatever object or whatever artwork they were doing and so you can do the same here and that's the main principle here in the painterly shader 
if you select this you're you're going to notice that you have this inking lines let me see if I can show you that I think it's down here I think it's this one yes and this is exactly what it's going on see what we talked about earlier so you have this threshold if we can say it so where you can move this and it's going to be very smooth maybe it's something that you're going to like and if you move this then you're going to manipulate that other side as well then you can do this or maybe that's not the correct approach this is the correct approach um, and then you say sure but what if I want to open or variate that then depending on where you're going to do it you need to scale the mouse grade texture as you can see right here okay you can scale it like such if you scale it to a minimum it's going to be bigger like 435 something and then you're going to also scale this one you're going to see that and that's individual parameters but there is a size for layer one already set right here where you can use that to also affect your your um, your lines so if you want this even bigger then you can go back over here and then start to move here the noise texture and as you can see it's less strokes and if you even want more controls or more stretching in this case you can use the X okay or the Y maybe this is the most practical case where you have scaling on the procedural node scaling on the distributing of a node this one is uh, controlled by one single um, a parameter numbered where you can over here change the appearance okay of this specific color overlay too and you know it's this one because it's yellow so you can identify that and then you have a mix to be distorted and distort the noise that's why you you have all of this okay it's been 34 minutes so I hope this video helps you with all of these parameters and again I will be happy to help you uh, to understand or rather to manipulate any other thing that you need to to get in order for you to customize your painterly style. In addition, we're going to generate, you can see right there, noise to the smear vector. That smear vector uh, gives the pigments on the base all its properties and that is just paint. Then comes the blockiness stroke which is those lower, larger um, sections that you see here we can say this is a blocky stroke you can see that um, it works then that we have the light threshold that light threshold is in charge to um, use the painter painterly longer smears created by the waves like you can see right here this uh, the painterly rim light it's the one that we already saw and it works uh, by using some of the size for the bumps that's why we use bumps and this bump is not on the final bump it's a a fake bump if we can say so uh, then you have the flakes I don't think I showed you this oh no yes the flakes you already saw this one and let me see if I can saturation base color and contrast in our previous case we had this and this is the what we could call the richness of the color base this is where all your previous generated um, generators will get tinked will get a value so in my case I gave this this kind of value you can saturate it as much as you want I think the last factor that I forgot to mention it's the way all of the layers blend 
just as Photoshop uses layers, the mixing modes between layers is determined by the mix to RGB. Okay? And then you can decide which factor you can you can mix. Now if you do it right here, like this, you're not going to notice any changes. So my advice is that first you click at the end of the generator with Ctrl Shift click. In this case, Ctrl Shift click. You see right there. You adjust all the parameters. And once you have that, you can come to the next generator which is mixed. Ctrl Shift click over here. And I think this one is taking from the UVs. Yes, this one is taking from the UV, so you will not see it here, but you can check it down here with the with the with this thing. You can adjust that as well. And then you can Ctrl Shift click here for the mix. And now it's going to mix whatever you did here with whatever you did here. And then you can decide the factor for that. See that? Please notice down here the, the square, the grid. So you can decide how much of that it's going to affect. So in my case, I'm going to leave it here. Next, you're going to click over here, Ctrl Shift click over here, and now you're mixing anything that you have right here with everything that you uh, picked up back here. And this one is coming from UV again. So only the UV textures will work. And then you can mix the factor for that threshold. If you click right here, you're going to see this. And if you don't like that shape, you can manipulate it over here. Okay, this is going to give you more contrasty look. But if you don't like this, then you can change it over here. Okay, this value thing will allow you to change. You can guide yourself with this. Maybe you want something like this. Uh, this is called the ink overlay spread because this is specifically creates that inking effect that we early spoke about. Those lines that are um, this separates. And then I mix this with overlay. Obviously it's going to give you a better result on volumes than on a plane. So you can also check with Suzanne although she's uh, she's she has weird UVs as you can see right here it's not opened correctly in some areas uh, but you get the idea so it is best advised that you use a, a volume model like in my case this face okay so I hope this has walked you through the entire sets of features that you can see and use for this model. Now why do we see this um, painterly things over here and it's not in the original shader? Let me just reopen this. That is because I let me press 0 to go back to the to the camera, press F12, you're going to get the render and here is the render. You can save that image, save as. I'm going to be opening Krita 5.1 pre-alpha. By the time you get this 5.1 pre-alpha. And what's neat about this version, which is pre-alpha, that means it's um, experimental, just like we when we get a Blender experimentals. What is neat about that is that they have this new set of brush engines called the RGBA brush engine. And what it does is that you can come here and all of these brushes are designed to to mix okay to create this kind of effect. 
right now I'm using my mouse but it is very very advisable that you use a a tablet a stylus so that you can use this um, and mix and blend with much ease now you will probably paint if you have a color to paint with so I was advised that whenever you do right click and then you open this little thing right here it's going to ask you if you want to color it to use this brush to color or not if you don't want to color but you just want the mix and appearance then you set the color rate to zero and then it's not going to paint it's just going to smear okay that is just um, I'm exaggerating here so you can notice the the impasto effect look at that okay well I think you get the idea right now my mouse is doing hard strokes but if you would had a stylus then you can create all of this as you can see the shader just creates the basis for your artistic eye to continue to refine this this um, this render and right now here it's just exaggerated but you get the idea and of course if you want to change something like the something like those 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 dots like we spoke earlier you will come to the appropriate generator I think it's uh, mono pigment and uh, polychromatic noise dots and you will come here where it says uh, add this is the mixing factor those are the polychromatic you can see one here 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 if you don't want them then you can just lower them down and then the previous uh, layers will kick in but if you want them then you can just add more <laughs> more of them it looks weird if you need to adjust the size then obviously you can come here to the generator and get to the size which one is the size well we can see here the Voronoi texture takes care of some of those things okay so if you don't want that many for example then just use this scale to lower them this is to distort the entire space as you can see we have more on Y so you can do this as well I know it might be daunting and it can take a little bit of practice but when you do you're going to be able to create anything with this stylized painterly shader I may add I did create the shader to stylize clothes and that's part of a project I have for 2022 God willing and I want to share that with you in in our patron so thank you very much for your support and please let me know if you have any other questions about this shader thank you very much